Good day from CSG headquarters in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm Sean Sloan, Senior Policy Analyst at the Council of State Governments, and I staff the Workforce of Tomorrow subcommittee of CSG's Future of Work National Task Force. One of the policy areas the subcommittee is focused on is how state government and its partners can help to foster lifelong learning, something we know is going to be necessary for the workforce of tomorrow as they face a world of work that is increasingly dynamic and uncertain in the years ahead. The subcommittee is also keenly interested in figuring out how to best support partnerships that allow students and workers to attain new competencies and credentials and master new skills over the course of their lives and careers. Today we're going to hear about an initiative called Credential Engine that, as their website puts it, is working to create credential transparency, reveal the credential marketplace, increase credential literacy, and empower everyone to make more informed decisions about credentials and their value. I'm joined by Credential Engine's Executive Director, Scott Cheney, and Chief Strategy Officer, Deborah Everhart. Scott and Deb, welcome. What is Credential Engine, and why is what you all are doing so necessary? Well, good morning, and, and thank you very much for inviting us to, to join you today. So Credential Engine's work is necessary because we're operating now in a, in a marketplace of credentials. And, and let me just define that for a second. Credentials are, in our lexicon, everything from a high school diploma, a license, a certificate, a certification, a badge, all the way through every type of degree at every level. So all the way up through PhDs, that marketplace is enormous. It's getting bigger all the time. It's very complicated and it's really opaque to the average user. Um, so what we're working on is finding ways to have better comparability, better discoverability and searchability by using a common language that will help bring transparency to this marketplace. So anyone from a student, a worker, an employer, an educator will be able to understand in more depth all of the characteristics and connections between competencies and credentials um, in the entire marketplace. So what, what have been the challenges uh, as far as creating this common language, this um, comp comparability uh, or interoperability when it comes to credentialing? Well, this, there are many challenges, and as Scott pointed out, there are many players in this marketplace and growing um, pretty much every day. So, you know, if we were living in a world where someone could get their high school diploma, go to college, get a college degree, get a job, stay in that job for a long time, then what you're talking about are, you know, relatively few points at which learning is formally documented and relatively few handoffs from one system to another. But now with so many different players in the marketplace and the need for everyone to have, you know, much more detailed and variable records of what they've learned, what their skills are, what they've achieved in multiple learning environments as well as on the job, we're talking about many systems. And so interoperability becomes critical. And so because those systems have all developed separately and haven't been using any common standards or common language, it's a challenge to bring them all together. But that's exactly what we're working to do. So if you think of this common language that we're working on as not only shared definitions of the, of the types of learning that is being documented, but also importantly, a language that both people and machines can use, a metadata language that connects all of these different pieces of information in ways that work across systems and on the web. Yeah. So what does this universe look like of, of the, the different kinds of organizations and companies and entities that are uh, creating and, and issuing new credentials these days? Well, we're, we're doing our best to get our arms around that, that marketplace and to describe that marketplace. The first thing we did was just want to get an idea of, of how many credentials are out there. When we started this organization, we, we all had as our goal to have every type and every one of those credentials 
be described in this common language, but we really didn't know what that universe was. So we've now done two years of a pretty in-depth research on the marketplace, and we've identified at least 738,000 unique credentials just in the US alone. And that ranges across a multiple of different types of those credentials. So as I mentioned earlier, high school diplomas, badges that are being issued by companies such as uh, McDonald's or uh, Microsoft or IBM, um, Salesforce, traditional two and four year institutions, licensing bodies, uh, you know, industry recognized certification. So, the, the types of credentials and the number of credentials is enormous. And we don't have a firm count on the number of those actual providers of credentials, but my rough off the, the back of my envelope guess is at least 40,000. Once you start counting the number of universities, the number of apprenticeship sponsors, the number of certification and licensing bodies, it's a massive marketplace. And, and that's growing, as we've said earlier, every day. And in many ways, that's a good thing because it means that the economy is changing. The economy is continuing to evolve. Employers need different sets of competencies, different sets of skills that requires a new credential to reflect exactly that unique combination of skills to meet a particular requirement on the job. So we shouldn't expect the marketplace to slow down. And it's a good thing that it's going to be continuing to be active. What we need, though, is the ability to understand what all these new credentials are, what the old credentials are, how they connect to each other, and to give those workers the best insight into the new and most efficient pathways they should be on to be successful in that marketplace. Yeah. Um, the Credential Engine website has a long list of, of current registry participants. Uh, what can you say about who those folks are that, that are bought into what you all are doing? And you know, are there folks that have been uh, more difficult to, uh, to convince uh, that this is the way to go? Well, we have partners really across the spectrum that Scott was just describing. So the organizations that have published their credentials to the registry and provided information about who they are um, as credential issuers ranges from um, higher ed institutions, K-12, industry certification bodies, licensure bodies, um, states, various types of government agencies, employers, career and technical schools, and so it, it really is across the spectrum. And, um, you know, the thing they have in common is that they understand the importance of credential transparency and why they need to be able to um, provide this metadata about their offerings so that it can become part of an informed marketplace where people can compare different types of credentials, but more importantly, be able to stack and combine them in you know, countless different ways across a career and a life of learning and growing. So how do things scale up from here? What, what are the challenges you face going forward and, and where does uh, this process all uh, move into the future? Well, we've, uh, we're still on the front end of all this work, you know, of the 738,000 credentials and, and the equal number or more competencies and competency frameworks out there. You know, we have, um, you know, still a, a relatively small fraction of what's of what's available actually published. So to Deb's point there, one of the things we're doing is expanding the work we're doing with states. We, we currently work with um, 15 or 16 states formally. There are another 10 or so who are in active conversations about ways that they can join this work. And so a lot of our focus in the in the next year or so is going to be on expanding our state partnerships and our state support. And that's everything from helping states understand the value that transparency can bring to them as they're thinking about everything from building and, and documenting better pathways 
helping to identify gaps that exist in their marketplace in their state for where they're missing enough credentials of a certain type to support economic development or economic mobility? Are there um, you know, better ways that we can be connecting the credential and competency information we have to information about the skills and competencies required by new jobs and open jobs so that you can be linking the, the providers and the employers better to each other. We're also thinking more about how can we be working with states on building the enduring access to this information. So it's, it's not a project, it's not an initiative, but it is a way that states think about this is how we operate to make sure that this data is both comprehensive and rich that it's publicly accessible in linked open data interoperable formats, and that it's being used by lots of different providers to make sure that it's in the hands of students and workers and veterans in, in meaningful ways to help them with their pathways and, and their, their uh, journeys. So we're working more and more with, um, with a number of state partners and organizations that work with states from National Governors Association to Education Commission on the States, National Conference of State Legislators and others to really help to educate states about what the challenges are, how they can be part of this initiative um, and, and what they can be doing to embed policy into their states to support this um, going forward. So are, are there states that have uh, sort of gone above and beyond at this point with either their policies or their, their legislation or, or partners that, that they've, uh, uh, partnerships that they put together that have, that have really helped this uh, process sort of move forward? Yeah, so it's always hard to kind of, you know, pick your favorite child from, from among <laughs> all the states. So um, it, I, I won't say that any of them are doing it necessarily significantly better than others, but every state is taking their own pathway here. And every state, because of where they are and what they've already been doing, and, and the leadership in the state might have some different entry points. So let me just talk about a couple here. Um, Indiana, uh, I would be remiss if we didn't start with Indiana, because they've been our longest partner. They have actually published all of the credentials from their public two and four year institutions. They're working really hard to get their entire list of eligible training providers and their credentials they offer for their workforce programs or their Perkins CTE programs. They're doing a lot of thinking around transfer and how this information can help with transfer and credit articulation. They're doing a lot of thinking about how you can help veterans bring the information about the credentials and competencies they have and translate that into civilian um, communities, whether it's an employer or an educator. Um, State of Alabama is leading this work from the, the governor's office and really thinking about a, a wholesale overhaul of their state's data, uh, the entirety of their data about their credentialing work and how can they both use it to better inform students and workers but how can they also use it to better inform state policy and to have insights into what the state is doing? New Jersey is doing the same kind of work. Um, Kansas, we're working with the Board of Regents and publishing a lot of data. There's, there's so many really rich approaches that states are, are taking into this work. And what's really exciting is that every state is owning how this kind of a transparent language can support their policies and their goals um, and in different ways. So it's been fun and exciting to see how the states are adopting this and, and we're here just trying to keep up with that state energy. Yeah, uh, I wanted to ask about so, some other initiatives that Credential Engine is engaged in as well. Uh, you all contributed to a, a white paper that came out last year on something called Interoperable Learning Records, or ILRs. Uh, what can you tell us about that? So, um, as I said at the beginning, we should expect that everyone um, will have many different types of records of their learning and achievements over a lifetime. And in fact, you know, it's always been true that people have a variety of learning experiences 
and it may have been impractical to document them all before, but new technologies are letting us document things that are very granular, like the acquisition of specific job skills, or the competencies that are in a particular course, or you know, a certificate that's embedded in a degree program. And so um, interoperable is the key word here because those records will inevitably be coming from different systems and sources. How can they be pulled together in a way that they can be combined in meaningful ways and that the individual learner worker can control them? So the, um, the key idea of an interoperable learning record is that it provides um, a, a way for a person to have records from multiple educational institutions, um, their, their high school, their college, from licensure and certification bodies, from training organizations, from work-based learning, apprenticeships, um, and internships, military records, and also how those military records translate into civilian opportunities. Be able to combine all of those things in one place and understand my own achievements and be able to represent those achievements so that I can pursue new pathways or change careers when automation means that what I was doing is no longer viable or transition from military to civilian. And um, so anyway, that is the idea of the interoperable learning record. And from our perspective, the key thing how this ties into the work that we do with credential transparency is that we provide that metadata language for all of those records to convey very clearly and openly in this common language what the learning record represents so that it's not just a set of words but that the information inside those records is interoperable as well as the records themselves. And, and IL, ILRs are something that the, the White House is behind and a number of other organizations are behind, I guess, right? Yes, and there's actually um, a range of pilots that are spinning up this spring that provide many different opportunities for connecting educational organizations with employers, with military, to sort out some of the problems that um, are you know frankly pretty prevalent in terms of how education systems don't connect to employer systems and don't connect to military systems so the purpose of the pilots is you know to get those different um, parties different stakeholders talking to each other to get the systems working together and to actually produce examples of how um, interoperable learning records can combine from those multiple sources. So we should be seeing actually, you know, as soon as this summer or fall, live examples of interoperable learning records. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to ask about a website that the U.S. Department of Labor has called the Occupational Information Network, or ONET. Uh, that is helping to give folks a, a sense of you know, what different occupations look like and what the world of work as a whole really looks like uh, for a variety of different audiences and perspectives, I guess. How is what you all are doing at Credential Engine helping to inform ONET? Um, so we, I don't know if informing ONET is the right way to approach it, but making ONET even more valuable than it already is, and it's already hugely valuable, by including it in our common metadata language for credentials and competencies. So if we go back to the interoperable learning records for a moment, you can imagine that because a college transcript is so different from um, you know, a licensure verification, which is so different from an employee record. Um, how do you make sense of all of that? Well, part of that is that you have metadata that you can look at across the level of the, the credential or the documented achievement. But to really um, get at some of those details, you want to be able to look at the competencies and the job skills. 
And so the competencies and the learning outcomes that you have from an educational record um, need to have some way of mapping to the job skills. And ONET provides a massive set of occupational frameworks for all different occupations, very, very detailed uh, job skills. And, um, and ONET collects this information longitudinally. So they have this data over a long time. Now there are also other parties that are collecting this type of job skill information off of the web in real time. And so that real time information can be also combined with ONET data so that you can help fill in the gaps of how jobs are changing and how new jobs are being created. And you can do all of that in the common metadata language that we provide so that you have that translation level across education and current jobs and looking ahead into future jobs and how jobs are changing. Mm -hmm. And Scott, uh, you, you had mentioned uh, a number of uh, ways that Credential Engine is working with state partners and, and, uh, and state associations. And uh, I know that as we record this interview, uh, Credential Engine is also preparing to announce a new uh, state partnership focused on expanding credential transparency. And you're working with a number of organizations that CSG knows very well, including NCSL and, and NGA. Uh, how will this partnership help you build on the work uh, Credential Engine has been able to accomplish so far? So all of the work that we've done has been the result of an enormous community engagement. This, this work to build the metadata to make sure that it's reflective of all of the different stakeholders to be able to even have the term credential transparency be in an executive order that was signed by the Connecticut governor. All of this work has happened because a lot of people have understood the value of having better data in the hands of, of people in the marketplace. So our, our emerging partnership, and yes, we are, um, we are days away from being able to announce this partnership. Um, the, the emerging partnership with the National Governors Association NCSL, ECS, SHEO, CCSSO, and Data Quality Campaign is about making sure that when we're talking with states, we're making we're ensuring that all the relevant players in states are learning about the value of credential transparency, how it advances everything we've talked about, from more informed markets to richer pathways to people being able to make more informed decisions, it, making sure that the governors are hearing that at the same time the leadership of a state legislature is hearing it, at the same time the head of the higher ed system and the, and the K-12 systems are hearing it, and that it's building on all of the great work that states have been doing for years, in large part because of some of the efforts that Data Quality Campaign has been working on, that everyone sees that the next logical path, the next logical step in this data journey is to ensure that you have competency and credential transparency. And so working with all these partners, and, and we are very excited to welcome other partners. A lot of people have been approaching us to say, how can we also be a part of this to make sure that we're collectively and comprehensively helping states understand what is the best path for them to move forward on this so that it is an embedded part of how a state thinks about how parents and students in a state just expect data about what's in front of them, all these multiple pathways, how they should be able to get that data and consume it and use it and improve their own livelihoods by, by having linked open data um, you know, in their hands. Never calling it that, but having the tools that help them um, you know, through their, their daily process. So this partnership we're very excited about and it is a next natural extension of all the work we've been doing to, to build this broader community of people who understand the value and are working to put it in place. 
Well, Scott Cheney and Deb Everhart, I want to thank you for joining us today to tell us about the work of Credential Engine. This conversation will help greatly to inform the work of our subcommittee and task force going forward. Uh, I'm Sean Sloan at CSG headquarters in Lexington. Thanks for listening.